very, very quick tutorial on how to use iMovie here. We just click the icon in uh, our iPad and this is our start screen. As you can see, I've got all sorts of projects that I've already done there, which I can uh, just open by double clicking or changing the name. But for the moment, I'm going to press this plus button here and it comes up with new project and new trailer. New trailer is a brilliant new feature, but we're not going to look at that just yet. We'll have a look at that in another tutorial. So I press new project and we come to the uh, start screen here, which shows on the left top all of your video resources. Similarly, you can see that's because I, I've got the blue sort of film strip tagged. If I press the one next to it here, uh, here are all my camera resources, and this is everything that's on the iPad. Or if you're using Cl iCloud, everything that's on your cloud in terms of photos. And finally, we have music here. This is everything that's on my iTunes albums, playlists, etc., etc. Um, but there are also some other musical features which we're going to have a look at a little bit later, which are really useful. To the right of that, we have the uh, <coughs> preview screen. And this is all sorts of things that uh, you can see um, as you are busy looking at the timeline. And the timeline, of course, is the thing on the bottom, which is the most important bit because this is where we do all our editing. So, in order to get bits of these videos onto the timeline, um, we select them and we press this blue arrow. However, before you do that, there is another thing that you can do, which is to select. And if you see the little yellow bars here, you can just kind of slide them left and right to pre-trim the clips that you want to be exactly what you want. So here, for instance, um, I just want to avoid him making that horrible monkey face. So I'm going to just trim that out and then put it in. And then I've only got the section that I want. Uh, let's put some other clips in just so you can see what we're doing. <clears throat> and you can see all of these have been entered in the order in which I click them. Um, so what you might want to do is move them around a little bit. So you select them and you just drag them to their new position. And that's the best way of doing this. A couple of little things to note when you're on the timeline here. One is this blue button here, which if you uh, unclick, you'll see removes all the audio. Now, actually, the audio is a really useful thing to have, so you should probably leave it on. There you can see you've got video and audio, and you can hopefully hear what they are saying. So if I play this back... There you go. We've got the sound as well as the video. Next little bit that's useful to know is this bit between uh, the video clips. These are called transitions. Uh, transition is basically how you get from one clip to another. If you double click them, here are your options. You can have none whatsoever, and that means that you'll have a jump cut. If you see here, I go from one clip, just jump straight to the next one. Alternatively, I could do a cross dissolve, which is what you just saw, which is where one fades out as the next clip fades in. And you can alter the length of that cross dissolve. So I'm going to do about two seconds there. And let's see what we've got. One fades out, the other fades in nice and slowly. And finally, a really neat little feature that iMovie has, which makes it much better than, I, uh, than uh, Windows Movie Maker, is these themes. Um, now, themes, for themes, you come up here to the top right hand side to the settings. And these are the themes that you can choose from. You've got a modern look, you've got a bright look, you've got a playful look, apparently. Um, all sorts of things here. This is quite a playful one for travel, for kids, primary schools use it a lot. Um, I quite like this news one. It's really, really cool. And you can see that if I um, put this on and then play through the transition, I have a themed transition. 
Now this works really well because you can combine this with something else here. If I select the clip and double click it, you can see if I can put a title on it. So if I click title, if I put a title at the opening of the clip, let's say, I've got that same theme again. So it can continue throughout the whole video. And the title's obviously dead easy to do. All I do is uh, write in, let's say, Fin and Part News. That's my latest program. And you can see here, up comes my title. And then on the transition, I've got that theme transition. And I can do that to each one of these and it will give me exactly the same theme. One of the weaknesses though is that you can't swap theme in the middle of a video, but it, it doesn't look particularly good anyway. Next important thing you can do, um, let's just double click this video again. You can see that as well as the uh, title style, we can also alter the volume. I'm gonna show you why that's important a little bit later. And then having double clicked it, you will notice that we got these yellow boxes around it. Now, there are two things that you can do with clips if you haven't pre-trimmed them, as I showed you before. One is to drag one side of the box, and you can see I'm cutting down that clip. I can also do it from the front. Cut that down too, which is really, really good. Or I can line the clip up in exactly the place, for instance, let's do it on this one, I can line it up in exactly the place that I want it, click it, it you must make sure it's yellow, and you see where the pink uh, line is, I just swipe down that, and what happens is it splits the clip in two. And that gives me two separate clips, one of which I could quite easily just move somewhere else, like so. Or alternatively, I could just select it and drag it up, and it will go poof in a flash of smoke. It's not a particularly flashy flash of smoke, but no way. Um, and that allows you to cut down clips as you might want them to edit them out. Um, another thing that you can do is, for instance, you can select the theme and have a fade in from black or a fade out to black. So for instance, here you see this little icon has appeared at the end of the clip. And so as I move towards the end of it, it will fade nicely to black, we like that. Next important thing, once you put themes on, is sound. Now, if we go to the sound button over here, actually I'll show you how to put a little photo in, just in case you wanted to. Um, so here we are going to have a photo of Spock. I don't know why Spock, but I'm just going to put that in. And in it goes. Notice it's gone to exactly where I've positioned the uh, pink line. So therefore, if I wanted to change this, I might have to bring it along here by dragging it. Now, one of the things with photos is that if you select them, you can see at the top there is a start position. So I'm going to have the photo as large as it will go. And then I can click on the end button here. And this says, where do you want to finish the picture? So I, I want it to actually come into Spock's face, so it looks a little bit creepy there. And you can also alter how long the photo stays on for, so I can increase that. And then when you click Done, all of that should apply itself to the photo. So you can see, there's Spock, and it goes in slowly into his face something you can do with photos. Finally, the last thing that really sells a video is sound. So we can put um, a track over it, that's absolutely fine. Uh, no idea what I'm going to put. You can pre... it by pressing the arrows here, you will hear the track. And it's far too loud, so I'm not going to use that one. Um, I'm going to go for a couple of little things here. One is the theme music. So here you kind of need theme music that plays in with um, the theme that you've, got, you've gone for. So I'm going for eye report. Let's just, this is going to be loud as well, undoubtedly. That's good, I like that. So I am going to drag this. And you see the green comes in there. 
Now, we have a slight problem here, which you'll pick up if you listen to it. Namely, that I can't hear what on earth is going on with the reporters on the TV. So, if I double-click their clip, you can see that I've got volume low. The dialogue should always be louder, so what I'm going to do is turn that up as far as it will go, and you can see those little blue images have just gone up a bit there. Similarly, the green one, if I double-click, I can take that audio clip down. And what you're trying to do is find a balance between the two, so you can hear both the music and the reporters. And you see I've got that wrong because now the music's too low. I can just, and it's a matter of trial and error there, really. There, that's pretty good. I've got that exactly as I wanted it. And the last thing I can do is sound effects, for instance. Um, I'm going to go for a boing crowd, whatever that is. It, it's worth playing around with these because some of them are really good and some of them are really stupid. I'm going to go for a camera shutter here. I'm going to put it just at the start here. And do you know what? I'm going to put several. And again, what I can do with these is double click them and bring the clip volume down a little bit. So that gives you an idea that if I've combined the sound correctly, I should be able to hear all of them. Yeah, you can see the camera shutter is a little bit loud there, but it gives you a really good idea. Anyway, once you've got your project absolutely sorted, there's a couple of other little things that you can do. One is to record some audio of your own, for instance a voiceover. You might want to do a voiceover to your video. And you simply press the microphone here, and it brings up this uh, record and you press the record button, obviously there it's just showing me what my volume levels are, but I'm not going to do that. And the final one is right next to it, the camera button. And this allows me to take some more video, or if I twiddle the little button down in the bottom left hand corner, it allows me to take uh, a picture, which I won't do for the moment. Anyway, once I'm finished this video, and it's to my liking, which this isn't, but it'll have to do, I press on this button on the top here to take me back to the project window and now we can finish this project off. Um, next to the plus button we have a little optimization uh, button which allows the movie to look super smooth. I'm not going to do that for the moment. Um, we can then uh, the little arrow going to the right is my export button and this is really really good. Um, I would always go for the camera roll first, and I would always go for the largest quality that you can, just so that you've always got a record of it there. However, alternatively, you can export to various formats, such as straight to Facebook or YouTube. All you do here is you get, uh, you press YouTube, you add in your username and your password for your own YouTube account, and then you'll be required to do a title, a description, category, tag it, etc., and that allows it to upload straight away to YouTube. It takes a little bit of time, but it's well worth doing. Finally, you can import things using the final button from iTunes, but I tend not to uh, save anything to iTunes. And if you think it's really, really rubbish, then you can put the whole project in the bin on the right-hand side. It won't be really rubbish. It'll be really good. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this, and I hope you got something out of it. See you next time.